Hi, Mark Gilbert here, and in this video I want to discuss reducing our political polarization. I know this topic is on the minds of a lot of people these days. I know in this past week I've had conversations with several people where we'd be discussing something else and the conversation would lead into the fact that we've never seen the high degree of polarization, especially here in the United States, as we've seen in recent times. And it's one of those things that's bothering a lot of people, if they're thoughtful about it, about the ways that we have gotten into demonizing each other and putting ourselves into tribes. What I'd like to do in this video is to address that in a way that maybe we can take personal responsibility for reducing political polarization ourselves through our own thoughts, words, and actions. And that's what this video is about. I'd like to say at the beginning, I'm not trying to change anybody's political opinion about anything. You can be right-wing, left-wing, you can be Democrat or Republican, you can be a pro-vaxxer or an anti-vaxxer, you can be on any side of the political spectrum. This video is not about changing your opinion on any of those political positions, but looking for a way in which you can express your opinion and hear the opinion of others without turning that other person into some sort of other that you want to uh, dislike or uh, be mean to. And that is really the goal that we're seeking today. So much we hear these days about how we turn into our own tribes. That we like being around the people who think and act and speak like we do. There's a great comfort in being around people who believe as we do, and I recognize that. But at some point, we have to recognize, too, that when we isolate ourselves into our own camps and our own groups, that we're not mixing with other people and seeing and hearing their concerns in a way that will allow us to come together and find common ground and common solutions. You'll also notice I'm not entitling this video Eliminating Political Polarization. And in fact, political polarization historically has been with us forever. There has always been a wide spectrum of beliefs and there's always been people on the far ends of the spectrum from liberal to conservative. And the truth is, the variety of political opinions, a healthy middle, and people on either extremes are useful to us in humanity because it gives us a, vari a wider variety of options, thought processes, and uh, possible solutions. And so when we can take the variety of information that's coming in from all of the various political uh, positions, it actually helps us to set a course towards a higher and greater end result than if we all thought alike. If everybody had the same belief and the same opinion on something, that would lead to a staleness in our creativity and a staleness in our decision-making ability that would preclude us from really finding the best solutions to our issues. So I want to see us maintain a healthy mixture of people with different opinions and different beliefs. So the basic issue is, how can we hold different opinions without turning the person who believes differently from us into some other that we demonize. Another commonality that I discovered in my conversations with friends about the issue of polarization is that pretty much all of us have found that there were people who used to be our friends, that we used to interact with routinely, that now they're no longer in our lives. We find we no longer converse with them, either in person or on social media, that somehow or another this degree of difference on our beliefs around certain issues have led us into this path where we divide ourselves from them and no longer interact with them. That's not healthy and we need to turn that around. Now there's many reasons and they're complex as to how we got to this point where we're so polarized. It's not my intent to go into that in this particular video. However, I have written some blogs that go into that subject, and I'd highly recommend the book by Ezra Klein entitled Why We're Polarized. Links to both are in the show description, and they go into more detail on that particular aspect of this subject. What I'd really like to do within this video, however, is to offer you some ideas on how you and I can change our own actions to move towards creating a world that's less polarized, to taking personal responsibility in our own sphere of influence for doing what we can do to break down this sense of me versus them and finding the other person as the other. So what is it you and I can do to actually work towards reducing political polarization? Well, my suggestions fall into three broad areas. The first is 
hold the vision. The second is cultivate awareness. And the third is respond with heart. When I talk about holding the vision, what I mean is your answer to the question, what kind of world do you want to live in? What kind of world do you want to live in? What kind of world do you want to hand off to your children and your grandchildren? When you look around at your experiences, what are those experiences like each day that you want to see manifest in all of your interactions with other people? Now, I'm not talking about political positions here. I'm not talking about the world that you want with political actions. I'm talking about our interactions with one another, our personal interactions, how we treat and respond to our fellow human beings. When you visualize the world that you want to live in as you interact with others, what kind of world does that look like? I really do encourage you to take some time to visualize and feel the kind of world you want to live in. How do you want to be treated? How do you want to treat other people? And when you think about that, I suspect most of us will come up with something that looks very much like the golden rule a rule that exists throughout almost every religion in some form or fashion because it's central to the human interactions. And that is, we wish to be treated in a certain way and we want to take the way that we want to be treated and treat others in that way. If we want to be treated with love, kindness, dignity, and respect, then we will treat others with love, kindness, dignity, and respect. The very fact that we treat others in the manner that we wish to be treated is a way most of us probably feel that we'd like to see the world exist. Now, I suspect there may be some of you out there viewing this video who say, nah, I don't really want to live in a world where we're treated equally. I'd rather live in a world where maybe I win and you lose. Most likely you're not watching this video anyway, and you're okay with political polarization. But if the issue of political polarization is an issue for you personally, and you're looking to take responsibility for what you can do to help alleviate it to some degree, then the very first step is to hold this vision of the world where we treat each other with dignity and respect. My second suggested action that we can all take is to cultivate awareness. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm suggesting that we cultivate awareness in two areas. One is to become aware of our emotions and the second is to be aware of how we respond in situations that are politically charged. Being aware of your emotions means being in tune with whenever you are feeling upset, angry, defensive, whenever you feel within you that you want to blame the other person or consider them somebody who's not worthy of your interactions or you're considering them the other or you feel like you want to retreat into your tribe. Any of those emotions that can come up either in response to some social media post or a TV uh, news item that you're watching or it could be in a personal interaction with another person who believes differently from you. Whenever any of these situations occur where there is an online or media or personal interaction that's causing you to have an emotional response, I want you to develop an awareness that you are becoming emotional, that you are becoming defensive or angry or whatever that emotion is. Because when you become aware, that allows you not to then respond immediately from that sense of anger, upsetness, defensiveness, or whatever the emotion is. You're not going to immediately respond, but instead you're going to allow yourselves to develop a degree of awareness of your response. We often hear the terms response ability. That is your responding ability in a situation. Think of how uh, Stephen Covey put it in his Seven Habits book. He talked about the fact that when we get a stimulus of some action and we normally respond, to imagine that you're building a gap of time in between the stimulus and the response. And in that gap is the time frame during which you can consciously choose how to respond to the situation. So many of us, when we get something thrown at us, we immediately answer back out of anger and fear. And we can do that automatically and sometimes even surprise ourselves. But what I'm calling you to do with this level of awareness, once you're aware of your emotions and the emotional feeling over the situation, is to then become aware of developing that gap of space where you can think, what's the best response in this moment? 
How can I respond with love and care and concern for this other person? How can I respond in a manner where it saves the relationship, where it doesn't harm us, where it doesn't divide us? You're looking for a response that will allow you to, yes, be true to what you believe, yes, true uh, to whatever it is that you feel is a core aspect of what your, your political beliefs or other beliefs are. You, I'm not saying give in or, or deny that in any way. But what I am saying is that you can have that healthy boundary towards what you believe and yet also say what's also important in this moment is to maintain the relationship with this other person. If you can respond in a way that allows you to honor what you believe, yet still focuses on maintaining the connection with the other person, then you're going to go a long way towards reducing polarization. And that brings me to my third suggestion, which is to respond with heart. If you've been able to cultivate awareness and identify your emotions and think about a way in which you can respond with awareness, that response needs to be one that comes with heart. What do I mean by that? It's one that recognizes that even in spite of your differences with the other person, that this person in front of you is a human being just like you. This is a person who came onto this planet and they've gone through their life experiences and it's led them to where they are right now. Just like you, they want to have their basic needs met. Just like you, they want a successful life. Just like you, they want to feel love and belongingness. They want to have a happy and prosperous life. There is so much alike about you and that other person that tends to get shunned aside when we focus on political differences. And we want to bring that commonalities back into our awareness. We want to turn ourselves away from the differences on the political issue of the moment but instead see the common nature that exists between you and that other person. If you can see them as just like you and li having lived a life and having needs that need to be filled just like you, that allows you to open your heart to them. It's not to say that you've got to agree with their political position, but it opens you to understanding that if you'd lived their life and had all the experiences that they had had, you might feel and act and believe just as they do. And that opens you to a little bit of compassion to saying, okay, I want to maintain the relationship with this person. I don't want to throw them away or divide myself from them or shun them in any kind of way. I want to maintain the relationship. Hence, I want to find a response that is going to allow me to, again, honor myself and my own beliefs, but to also honor them as well. What does that look like? Well, in the first case, it means listening to them. One of the best gifts we can give each other is to listen. We all love to be listened to. Listen to the other individual. Even if you don't agree with their opinion, you can listen to them and probably learn something about their thought process and why they believe that. Listening to them allows you first to seek to understand that person. And again, in the words of Covey, seek first to understand, then to be understood. One of his seven habits of highly effective people. And that's really key. If I can understand their position, then I can respond from that. So often we hear the person, they say some buzzwords that push our buttons and we automatically roll the tape within us that responds to that position. What I'm calling you to do is to build that gap in again, where you can then listen to them so that they feel heard, just like you will feel, want to be felt, felt heard. And that maintains the human connection. You know, at the end of the day, you may have to, and it sounds cliche, but it's true. You may have to agree to disagree. Oftentimes I do that with people where we get into situations and I can see, okay, I believe this, they believe that. I can outline exactly in my mind where our differences are. I can describe the difference to, bo to both of them. Here's your position, here's my position. We don't see eye to eye on this and we're not gonna come together on it. But at least in this moment, we can acknowledge that's the difference and that's all it is. It doesn't tr transfer over to all aspects of our life. It doesn't cascade over to their humanness. And if we can allow ourselves to be isolated on the political differences and keep that difference in context, 
then we won't start demonizing the other person and seeing them as some other to be hated or harmed. Now, having said all that, I do want to point out that sometimes another person is not open to maintaining the relationship. And sometimes the best thing you can do, the best heart response you can make in a moment, is to remove yourself, to not respond to the email, to not respond to the social media post, to not respond to the person in front of you. Simply hear them, acknowledge them, and then turn away from that situation. That may be the most loving response in that moment. Finally, I want to acknowledge it takes great skill and practice to respond consistently with heart. You're going to mess up. Don't beat yourself up. Just set the intention to do better the next time. It really calls us to develop a whole set of tricks for our bag that we can pull out at a moment's notice. Little phrases and ways in which we can respond that allows us to interact with care and concern. One of the best resources I've seen for this is the book Nonviolent Communication by the late Marshall Rosenberg. I highly encourage you to pick up a copy of this book or get it from the library. I'll put a link to the book in the show description below. He goes into some practical skills that you can develop so that when you're talking with somebody, you can maintain them on a nonviolent, non-threatening way. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope that you set the intention with me to reduce political polarization. We all know it's an issue in this country, and we all want to transcend it. What are you doing to assist in that way? I'd love to hear from you if you've got suggestions on ways in which we can reduce the polarization in this country. Thank you. Love and blessings. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. There's a similar video right here next to my face if you want to click on it. Also, if you want to get notifications of future videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button on the bottom left-hand corner. If you'd like to contact me, email me at the address on the screen or drop me a comment in the comment field below on YouTube. Thanks.